If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. So in this episode of Mind Pump, we went on one topic only. We talked all about high-intensity interval training. The reason, why, the reason why we did it now is uh, summer's around the corner, or maybe even here now, and a lot of people are interested in burning body fat. It's like the common, most common goal, period, in fitness, but especially in the summer. And high-intensity interval training done properly burns body fat better than anything else. Uh, so in this episode... We open it up by talking about what HIT training actually is, and then we talk about the cons of HIT training, how there's a higher risk for injury, how you're, it's more likely to cause burnout, and it's not ideal for some people. For some people, it's the wrong way to work out, but then we get into the pros. We talk about who it's for. We talk about how the workouts can be challenging and fun, so a lot of people like that. We talk about how it burns more body fat than traditional forms of cardio or other workouts, how it's great for athletic performance. We talk about who it's appropriate for. So if you want to take advantage of the fat burning effects of HIT uh, type training in this episode, we explain who this person is. And if you are in this category, you could definitely take advantage of HIT to burn body fat and maybe even build a little muscle. That's the other awesome thing about HIT. We also talk about mobility because HIT training is not complete without mobility uh, incorporated in, into it because of the intensity involved. People tend to hurt themselves if they don't do uh, some form of mobility training. Now, we timed this episode perfectly because our MAPS HIT program is still on sale. It's 50% off, but you only have two days left for this promotion. After May, this promotion will be over. You will not get the 50% off. Now, MAPS HIT was written expertly. We put this together. It is HIT training with barbells and dumbbells to maximize the muscle building effect. So we minimize the fact that you may lo lose muscle when you're doing a lot of cardio, not with MAPS HIT. We also maximize the muscle building effect and the fat burning effect with this program. Again, it's 50% off. You only have two days left as of the airing of this episode. If you want to take advantage of this program, go to MAPS HIT. So that's M-A-P-S-H-I-I-T.com and use the code HIT50, H-I-I-T-5-0, no space, for 50% off. And that's it. All right, without any further ado, here we are talking all about high-intensity interval training. I want us to talk about a, a good topic because there's still a ton of confusion and contradicting information in regards to high-intensity interval training. Do you guys remember when that first study came out that made waves? It was, I want to, is it around 2000 and... Three, two thousand two. It, it was like there? early two thousands, yeah. right? Yeah, it was early two thousands when it when it hit and it became the. And no wasn't it based it. around uh, like an ergonomic bike with, that they were testing with? Oh, that's a good question. I don't know. Yeah, I feel like that was the case because they were trying to build up like really maximal intensity in 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 a confined um, tool like a like a bike. Mm. Well, the reason why it made so it made so many waves was because up until this point, the premier form of cardio, or I should say the only form of cardio really at the time that was used for fat loss uh, in the mainstream was this steady state form of cardio. In fact, I mean, <clears throat> up until this point, if I mentioned the word cardio, it was completely widely assumed that it would be the steady state type, right? Like, mm -hmm. oh, I did cardio. Nobody, nobody ever asked what type of cardio. It was always, they understood that you went for 30 or 40 minutes. Right, or cardio meant I went and ran and swept my butt. Yeah, it's just it's just a, a, a consistent steady state of intensity, um, and this study came, this study came out that compared that form of cardio, which is what everybody did, to high intensity interval training type cardio, which is cardio that's uh, characterized by short um, intense sprints mm -hmm. and periods of low intensity work. So like you're on a bike and you're going as hard as you can for 15 seconds or 30 seconds, and then you go easy for a minute, and then you do it again, and you repeat. That's the interval aspect of that cardio. Yeah, multiple <clears throat> variations came out of that for sure. Yeah, and what they did in the studies, they found that less time doing HIIT cardio burned as much or more body fat than more time doing the steady state type stuff. Which I think, or at least for me as a trainer, I remember reading that, and I wasn't that impressed with all this. Though I know it blew everybody else's mind. It became the most popular thing ever. And then we saw everyone talking about Epoch, but 
it's kind of obvious when you think about what you're doing, when you push the you're in that 15 second or 30 seconds, you're going you're, the idea is that you go as hard as you possibly can, and you 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 don't quite reach. Uh, your maximal heart rate, but you get pretty close. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're pushing your heart rate up to its max heart rate. I mean, it takes a good solid minute to two minutes, depending on your condition, but for the average person, at least a minute to two minutes of that heart rate to even come back to kind of normalcy. Mm -hmm. So the the extra calorie burn that you get because of the elevated heart rate and then the body trying to slow the heart rate down over the next, it makes sense that that would be a lot more work for the body re requiring more energy, more calories than just getting on there and cruising at a consistent rate. The reason why I think it was so popular was right before that, you know, when I first got into training with the, the big target heart rate trend was the thing. Right. And like don't go too hard. Yes. You're burning too much glycogen or too much whatever. Don't go too low. There was like a, a, a that's right. The Goldilocks zone the, of yes, the, the fat loss zone. Exactly. Yeah. The sweet spot, the fat loss zone is what we used to say. <clears throat> and so I think we were I was on the tail end of the popularity of that. Yep. And that everybody was on the cardio. Nobody was the only people that were really getting after it were if, if you were an athlete, if you're tra training to be an athlete, uh, if you were there for fat loss, everybody was over there checking their pulse and just kind of cruising. Now, along. now for the audience who might not be know what we're talking about, so when when we became trainers, they don't really teach this anymore. At least they hope they don't because it's stupid. But when I when we first became trainers, they taught us that there was a fat burning heart rate zone that mm -hmm. if you trained at this particular intensity that the largest percentage of the calories that you burned would be burned from body fat. Now, that's true. It is true that if you train within a particular intensity, which is not too high, not too low, to, just to, to kind of make it generalize, right, that you'll burn more, a higher percentage of your total calories that you'll burn are coming from fat. Now, the reason why this is complete baloney and why you shouldn't follow this is – it, it, it yes, it may be a larger percentage of calories from fat, but if you burn a lot more calories, it really doesn't matter that you burn more from fat at a lower uh, intensity. In other words, if I burn a thousand calories and seventy percent come from fat, I'm still burning more fat calories than if I burn five hundred calories, but seventy five percent came from fat. I'm right. still burning more fat calories because my total calories were higher. And the real people that that I see value in utilizing this, and I've talked about this before uh, long long ago on the show, is you know where I where I still use target heart rate type of training is when I was at you know three four percent body fat getting ready for a show. Like I'm I have very very little uh, body fat on me, and there's no need for me to push the body any harder. And at that point, conserving muscle has become even more of a priority than you know, burning extra said calories. And so, at that level, you you are at the point where you're you're splitting hairs because that's right. all that's left. Right. Yeah, You've right. done everything else perfect. It's the only time in my the yeah. only time in my life am I ever concerned about my heart rate. The rest right. of the time when I'm doing cardio, I'm doing. Right. And at the end of the day, you, you feet, have to be at a calorie feet. deficit anyway. So <clears throat> if you're not at a calorie deficit, none of it makes right. a difference. Right. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. make it any difference. Now the reason why we were sold this so hard as trainers is this was actually sold to gyms by cardio manufacturing companies, cardio machine companies. And gyms would tell their trainers to sell this because it sold their gyms. Because then what you would do is you would give a tour of the club and you talk about the fat burning zone. Oh, you know what's cool about this? The cardio that we have takes your heart rate, so now you can monitor. And that was actually a selling point back in the day. They, a lot of people didn't have heart rate monitors that they had at home. The only way you'd be able to test your heart rate while doing it, cardio is either measuring yourself or the cardio would measure it for you. The machine would measure it for you. And so it was just a selling point. And it, it's totally not something that you need to pay attention to unless you're at the point where you are splitting hairs. So yeah, it was, it was a kind of a big deal. And then this study comes out that shows that high intensity interval training burned as much or more body fat uh, with less time. Yeah, and half the time. And then the other thing that blew everybody away was, because uh, then other studies came out showing people lost less muscle. Mm. One of the, the potential drawbacks of doing a lot of cardio is because of the adaptation that cardio asks of your body. If I'm doing an hour of just steady state cardio, my body's going to try and get better at doing that by becoming more efficient. And the way it becomes more efficient is by... Uh, reducing muscle mass. So it's not that I'm burning 
muscle. Mm -hmm. It's that my body's just becoming more efficient at the demands I'm asking uh, of it. And so steady state cardio has that kind of bad reputation of potentially getting you to lose muscle. Hit cardio uh, doesn't do it to that degree. And in fact, there are some studies that show hit cardio may actually build a little bit of muscle and it's specific mm. to the type of hit cardio you do like sprinting like outdoors sprinting. yeah yeah like sprinting outdoors. now that fast twitch kind of anaerobic field too. and how would you guys explain that i used to tell clients that and the reason is because it, it closely resembles like plyometric training mm-hmm. where you're asking the body to move explosively and so then you're recruiting all these extra muscles to do that which sends a signal to the body to well, build and yeah, you're not there's doing a lot more demand because of the force it's, right? it's and anaerobic it's, and it's a short period of time yeah, right? it's a need, short burst you need it's, strength it's explo- exactly it's explosive like plyometrics and then you lay off yeah. and and because you lay off like that you get that you send that signal like to build muscle right, right? yeah so, anytime we increase the force and demand the body has to you know ad- adapt towards that so that it can keep everything safe and mm-hmm. all your joints safe and so like you're telling your body now you know we're at this higher threshold this higher intensity and we have to build uh you know muscles to to resist it yeah and like everything uh in the fitness space um or the popular fitness space a study will come out and then everybody will jump on board and then that becomes overused and high intensity interval training um is not immune to that and and so i think it's important that because there are people that it's inappropriate for there are situations where hit cardio is not the best form of cardio. Mm-hmm. And then there are situations where it is the best form of cardio. And it is amazing. It is a superior form of cardio. And so I think we need to break it down and explain to people you know, the cons of, uh, of hit What's, cardio, who, is it, who it's not for, the, the pros, who it is for, how to do it right. Just kind of demystify the whole thing so what, that people can understand. Was it also responsible for all the the studies and then the information that we saw that came out later with Epoch? I know Epoch was was big like in the seventies, and then it resurfaced again uh, in the two thousands. And we hear, I mean, we even hear it now again with Orange Theory and stuff like that. But and and we've now f- found out that it's it's pretty much moot. Yeah, the, it, it's not that like the difference isn't that big of a deal. But I remember reading stuff that would say, you know, when you do hit training, you know, you push the heart rate up so high like that, that the rest of the day, your your heart's beating at a little bit faster rate, which therefore would attribute to, you know, 70 to 150 more calories a day that your body's burning just because you did that hit session in the day. I also. think, yeah, they definitely uh, brought it back, you know, to surface uh, that afterburn effect as they yeah. started to call mm-hmm. it yeah, and coin it. And that became a marketing thing. That's as well. it right there. Yeah. Yeah, so that between that and like the time saving elements of hit cardio, I think a lot of people started mm-hmm. to get drawn in that direction because we're always looking for time saving, you know, effective ways to work out. Yeah, and then here's the other thing that that really uh, bothered me about the whole hit movement is that it's not all created equal. No. Now, now hit is characterized by short, intense uh, spurts of performance or exertion, followed by periods of quote unquote rest. Not that you're totally resting, but that your intensity is much lower waiting for yourself to build up enough uh, energy to be able to attack it again with an intense explosive burst of, uh, of energy or performance. And so that's, that makes, that's generally what hit is. But I think people started thinking that it didn't matter what they did, that as long as they did that, it was all the same. Like, Oh, cool. I'll just do whatever and throw a bunch of exercises together and do a bunch of different things. And I'm going to get a, a, a great uh, fat-burning workout. Um, yes and no. Yeah, you are burning calories. But no, uh, there's a lot that can go into making a HIIT workout truly, truly effective uh, for the body. Um, but I do want to talk about some of the cons of HIIT as right. well. I want to talk about some of the some of the bad sides of it because it's not perfect, right? Yes, it's, it's better at burning body fat, but generally speaking, well, but uh, let's talk about some of the risks. I mean, the first concern obviously is that, uh, you know, you might, like you might not be ready for this. Like this is a, a higher intensity style workout where, you know, if you haven't done the work preceding that uh, with joints to be able to handle that type of demand and shearing forces, you know, you're going to be compromised. And that's one of those first kind of flags out there is like, uh, can I even like handle, uh, you know, ramping up my intensity? Have I done the work going into that yet? Yeah. Hit, hit, uh, require, because it requires so much more intensity, the risk for injury doing hit is much higher. It just is. I, I, I could take, you know, ten average people off the street right now, 
and I could put them on a treadmill at a moderate intensity walk for 40 minutes of cardio, and most of them will be fine. Most of them won't get hurt. I don't think any of them will get hurt. It won't be an issue. If I took 10 random people off the street and then had them do a sprint session, uh, I can probably so guarantee that yeah, there's like seven or eight of them out of 10 will probably hurt themselves. So hit uh, the risk of injury is much higher. So it makes it a very inappropriate form of cardio for a lot of different types of people, especially people who don't have excellent mechanics. Here's a deal about uh, about the way your body moves. However bad your body moves, it gets much worse the harder you push it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't move better. It just actually starts to move worse. So if you run terribly, sprinting will be way worse. Well, not to mention, too, that when you do hit, the idea of, of – these intervals is you are pushing as hard as you possibly can. And mm -hmm. as we get fatigued, we all, even people with great mechanics, that's when your mechanics start to break down. Mm -hmm. And so you, you want to be in a place where you have real, if you're running, for example, you want to make sure that you have really good running mechanics to start with. If you're going to go implement something like hit, because it's inevitable, it's going to break down. And the more it breaks down and the worse you are at the, what you start off as, the more at risk you are. It's a lot like plyometrics. You know, plyometrics are very, it can be an incredible tool for some people, but a lot of people doing it wrong, a lot of people getting injured because they're not using mm -hmm. it a, a appropriately. Yeah. And then here's the other thing too, because of the intensity of hit type cardio or hit type workouts, the when I'm looking at a client or I'm looking at an individual and I'm considering their entire sphere of stress. And the reason why I say it's a sphere of stress is because the body perceives stress as stress, regardless of whether or not it's coming from a stressful relationship, lack of sleep, or a hard workout. They all go into the same bucket and, and all of them will uh, take away your body's ability to adapt to other forms of stress. So in other words, if I'm getting terrible, terrible sleep and I'm going through a horrible relationship breakup, my body's ability to uh, recover from and adapt to intense workouts is much lower. So it all goes in the same bucket. It's that sphere of stress. Well, so when I consider the whole sphere of stress, if I have a client who's not getting good sleep, hasn't worked out in a while, works long hours, you know, maybe they've got three kids and you know, life is just, just hectic, I'm less likely to prescribe high intensity cardio on that person because the chance of burnout is just much higher. Mm. Whereas the slow type of cardio may actually be recuperative. The high intense stuff just may be inappropriate for well, them. Well, this is this is the 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 greatest problem that I have with it is that the the type of person again that's attracted to this. Mm -hmm. It's really similar to the people that are attracted to most of the people that are attracted to the the CrossFits, the Orange Theories, the F forty fives. It tends to be the people that that shouldn't be doing it. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's the people that already, like to your point, Sal, are running on uh, are running on E already. They're completely caffeinated. They're taking three, four cups of coffee in minimum. They're grinding at work all day long. They've got a stressful home life. And then their they're exercise, they love this intense mm -hmm. uh, training. So those are typically the clients that love that type of training. Uh, again, like the cortisol junkies that, yeah. are, that are chasing that. Yeah, so let me give you an example. Let's say you have a person who's high stress, uh, not getting good sleep, diet's off. They're maybe a little bit deconditioned. And you had that person you know, go for a 30-minute walk outside and you're like, okay, this is what I want you to do for your workout. Do a 30 minute walk outside. Um, consider what that walk would do for that person. It would probably alleviate some of their stress, probably make them feel better. They'd burn some calories while doing it. It could be a recuperative, regenerative type of exercise. Now take that same person and instead say, we're going to go to the park and I'm going to have you do 10 all out sprints, yeah, hill sprints. up this hill inappropriate. Mm -hmm. It would it would actually burn them out. And so now you're taking a form of cardio which for some people, for for some people if it's appropriate, boosts their metabolism, burns sh shit tons of body fat, may even build a little muscle, it will well, do the opposite. It's it's a lot like someone. redlining in a car yeah. where you know like this is definitely if if 
intensity, if that's the main metrics that we're focused on this whole time, like there's a, there's a shelf life to that. And, and especially with hit hit is not one of those uh, styles of training that you want to live in for very long. I right. mean, it, there's a very short window to actually even getting gains from doing this type of, of cardio. And so, uh, you know, what I see common is people just get stuck. Like this is the only way, this is the only thing that's working for me. And uh, it, it becomes one of those things where they're not progressing anymore. That's because it's programmed poorly. It's mm -hmm. programmed poorly. Part of the programming is it's it's done indefinitely. Hit hit training should be done in short blocks. It should both because it's a high stress on the body, especially if you're already weight training. Look, if you're doing weight training and that's the cornerstone of your of your workout, which it should be, then you can add hit type training to it, but do it in blocks. Otherwise, you run the risk of, uh, of burning your body out. The other thing is there's either no programming or terrible programming with HIIT training. So what I mean by no programming is someone will just do HIIT on cardio, like on a treadmill or a bike or whatever. Fine. Very basic. You'll get some benefits. I get it. Then when people try to actually program HIIT training in the gym, what they end up doing is a mishmash of random exercises yeah. mm -hmm. and the selection of the exercises just is just hard it, shit. It's entirely based on how hard they are. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do, you know, uh, Tabata squats over here, box jumps over here. We're going to jump some rope. Then we're going to do 15 burpees. Then you're going to throw the medicine ball and uh, no it just gets sloppy and chaotic. I'm a hundred percent, a hundred percent. There's at least a uh, 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 hundred trainers right now listening who are like, oh, I just did that workout this morning <laughs> that I just said right now. Yeah. You know we're what I'm we're saying? shaming you right yeah, now. Yeah, <laughs> there, there, there is no programming consideration. It's just let's put together super hard exercises and then just go all out. And you're missing out on all the incredible potential that HIIT training can do for people because you're not programming it properly. If you pro Just like a weight training workout, it's no different. When I do a straight workout with weights or I'm programming a straight workout with weights, the exercise order, the exercise selection, how you do them, that all makes a huge difference. Tempo, reps, rest, like all those things go into programming. That's what makes a workout so effective. That's why a MAPS program is typically far more effective than your a, a regular workout you get off the internet for with weights or whatever. Same thing with HIT. It needs to be programmed properly. You need to be able to put the right exercises together um, in, in, in the right order for the right length and period of time. And that'll really maximize the type of results you get. And, and most HIIT workouts are just not like that. Well, an example, I mean, if, <laughs> if you're going to program something like a deadlift, you're going to be taxed. You know, and then trying to throw in something super hard that's going to compromise you, like a overhead press right after a deadlift, it would be a terrible idea. Yeah, your, right? your risk it, of injury goes up, and so just things like that oh, that yeah. you just have to consider that uh, you know one exercise before is going to affect the other, and you mm -hmm. have to stack them you know in line accordingly to what makes sense, so you can get through that with good form and, compo and composure uh, in, in order to make it effective. Now, how how often would you guys actually program hit for clients? and or for yourself so here's when i would program it is the person do they have uh you know decent movement patterns um and what are their movement patterns good for because that's what i'm going to consider with the hit workout so if this person's a not a great barbell squatter probably not going to put barbell squats in their hit workout in other words so i'm going to consider all those things um are they otherwise well rested well fed are they fit healthy um and is and is this person ready to go after it for three to four weeks. Um, and, and that's the person I would program this, this type of program for somebody who's like doing everything right. Everything looks good. Okay. Let's see how much body fat we can burn in a four week period. Because at the end of the day, if it's appropriate for someone and if it's done properly, there is no workout that burns body fat faster than hit. There just isn't. If you do it right. And it's again, if it's the right person and it's done properly, you're going to burn more body fat in a four, you know, four week or three week or six week period of time than you will uh, doing almost anything else. And of course, diet has to be in line. When I, the way I program it for myself is similar. If I'm feeling strong and healthy and I want to improve my athletic performance, it's usually athletic performance for me. So usually I'm thinking, okay, I want to improve my stamina. That's when I'll start to program um, HIIT style workouts into my routine. I usually don't think of them for me at least in terms of fat loss, for me, that's all diet. I manipulate diet 100% for that. But for me, it's performance. Like, okay, I want more stamina. I want more endurance. I'm going to do two hit workouts a week. 
and they typically consist of, you know, anywhere between two to four exercises programmed together with little rest in between, um, but done in a way that, you know, again, I'm in that hit style yeah. of workout. What about you, Justin? How do I use them? Yeah. Yeah. I have a similar to that in terms of like building up my gas tank. Um, but I, I like them for the fun of it. Like I, I honestly will program hit style workouts so I can move and express, um, you know, like intensified movements. I just like, I like going through that type of conditioning. I'm not real big fan of, uh, aimlessly just living on a treadmill and, and, uh, doing long bouts of cardio. I'm not a real big fan of doing long bouts of cardio to begin with. Yeah. And I'd rather just lift weights or if I am going to do cardio, it's going to be more hit style. So, um, I, I throw it in there to build up my endurance and durability, uh, but also just to move athletically and powerfully. So that's, I, I like to, to use, you know, throw them in there when I feel like I haven't been explosively moving and, uh, you know, getting my heart pounding. Yeah. For athletes, it's, uh, of course you're going to love it because yeah. if you're an athlete and you want to build that type of uh, athletic performance, I mean, uh, th- this is the form of, of cardio that you would probably rely on the most. Yeah, it very much resembles how I used to train and practice uh, when I was playing. Yeah. So. That's that's kind of similar to how I use it personally. I'll, I like to just intermittently, I do it like when I have time constraints, mm-hmm. which is not often. Normally, I have plenty of time to work out in the day. But every once in a while, there's a day where I've got to get off to some appointment and I have a small window to work out. And because I don't do it on a regular basis, nor do I recommend that people do it on a very regular basis, I think it's uh, amazing to intermittently throw it into a normal routine. So I can be in the middle of a MAPS anabolic type of a program or in the middle of any program for that matter. And it's like, oh, wow, this Wednesday, I ha- I forgot I have a haircut at 3 o'clock. My workout's normally at 2.30. It's like, oh, shit, I don't have very much time. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to do a hit session today. Uh, that'll be great because I haven't done it in forever. My body will respond nicely to it. It's mm-hmm. good. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I use it for myself. I've also... In- I've heard you mention like as you're going through like building yourself up to get on stage, like you've used that as a tool like towards the end uh, because you don't do much cardio to begin with in that. So I'm actually the same process that I go for myself uh, is how I introduce to like a client like right now. So I have a client who's got uh, and to Sal's point, I think is very important. So the first uh, prerequisites is you have to be able to move well. You have to be able to move well, understand exercise well. And then I also want you in a very healthy place metabolism wise first before I do something like this. And we are, uh, she's one week away from me introducing hit. So I already know that this is coming. Now, uh, I've been coaching her for the last two months and this is not a competitor. This is just a normal person. Uh, and, but what I'm working on with her is building her metabolism up. So she, her ultimate goal was to lose like 10, 15 pounds of body fat. Uh, when she, when she hired me, she hit was at 1500 calories. Uh, we are now, it's, I think we're like six weeks, six or seven weeks in right now. Uh, and we're between 21 and 2300 calories a day. So she's, I've moved her all the way up to tw- with no cardio. Mm. So zero cardio. And that was one of the first things that I, right away, we, I monitor through steps, uh, we started off at about 10,000 steps a day. Uh, then we moved up to 12,000 steps, then 13,000. We're up at 15,000 steps. So we're at 15,000 steps, roughly 2,300 calories, zero cardio whatsoever. And this is a car- this is a calorie increase for her is 2,300 calories. And it, the goal has been to kind of just maintain our weight. And that's exactly what we've done is we're about seven weeks in. We've maintained our weight completely. And so now I'm going to run her on a mini cut for two weeks. And in the mini cut will be I'll do a small calorie restriction and I'll introduce hit. And this will start in one week. So in one week, I'll take her from a 2300 calorie goal to about a 1900 to 2000 calorie goal with three days a week of 12 minutes a hit post-workout. Mm-hmm. So, th- and that's what I'll prescribe to her. And it'll be, we'll run at that for two weeks on this mini cut. And then when we go, then we'll go back to a surplus. And so every time I, I do these like little mini cuts with a client, hit is one of my favorite ways to get an extra calorie burn to show her some more, some more movement like that. I know that I'm not going to sacrifice a lot of muscle. Plus, I'm also considering her metabolism. I don't need her on long bouts, bouts of cardio yet. And th- for time reasons, it's only 12 minutes. So it's that's, a- the, that's the, probably the best thing about it yep. is that you can do in a 10, 15 minute window, you can m- get an effective workout, one that will actually produce results. Mm-hmm. There's very little forms of exercise that'll do that in that, that period of time. Like you can't stretch for that long and get lots of results. You can't lift weights necessarily for that. But if you do a hit training with some weights, a barbell, some dumbbells, you are going to get 
a, a, a an effective fat burning effect. And even here's the other aspect of it. In, in some cases, a little bit of a muscle building effect. You're definitely not going to get the f- muscle loss effect mm-hmm. that you'll get from excessive bouts of you know the steady state uh, form of cardio, which is why I think it's becoming one of the more popular forms uh, of, yeah, it's, of, of, of working out. Again, it's that window. I think if you time it all right, like it is, it has that effect where it, it, it'll preserve like the muscles that, that you've built, it seems. And, and in terms of like being able to now shed body fat and like have that uh, be a focus, that's how I like to throw it in there, yep. uh, you know, intermittently. Uh, and again, summer's coming around, so it's a perfect time for me to start doing it yeah. again. And, and remember, you got to understand this. Now, why is it that hit training if we're going to compare that to traditional cardio, why is it that you lose less muscle on that? We, we kind of made this point earlier, but I want to hammer it home. In order to do a, a proper hit workout, you are explosive. You are using strength, or at least using much more strength than you would doing traditional cardio, which, much more, which requires much more endurance. So you're sending a signal to the body that says, hey, I need stamina and strength versus the other forms of cardio, which we just need stamina. And so the body preserves muscle. And so for the metabolism, if it's appropriate for you, hit type workouts are better. They're better for your metabolism. Again, it has to be appropriate for you. That's a very, very important uh, point that I'm making. But if it is appropriate for you and it's programmed properly, you're going to burn more body fat and you're going to lose less muscle. And some people, I, this happens to me, when I do hit training with, uh, with barbells and dumbbells, sometimes... I build a little bit of muscle, which trips me out. Yeah. And I think mm-hmm. it's just a new stimulus. It's a little right. bit of a, a different type of training. And, and, and again, I program it very, very well. So I'm not just doing an endless circuit of you know 15 different you know insane right. exercises like a lot of people are doing. I'm doing mine or, or three or four movements. And I'm doing, you know, uh, I'm doing one intensely and then I'm like 10, 15 seconds and then I move to the next one mm-hmm. so that I'm kind of maximizing you know, uh, those types of effects. Um, the other thing about HIT training that is really awesome for a lot of people is it typically doesn't require a lot of equipment. Now, it doesn't mean that you you can't do it with a lot of equipment because you can do it with a lot of equipment as well, but you don't need a lot of equipment. Oftentimes, I would have my clients do hit workouts with three pairs of dumbbells mm-hmm. or a barbell and body weight, um, and, and that's it. We, don't, we didn't need to have you know, we, we would take up a small corner of the gym, in fact, and be able to do this this full workout, right. and it would only take 15 minutes. I mean, for convenience sake, it has to be one of the most convenient type of workouts. Uh, oh, that, yeah, I love that aspect of it. And you could also do it outside, and that's one of those things. I'll take dumbbells with a client, and we'll just do that entire workout outside, Like, and, and you don't occupy up a whole lot of space. So, um, yeah, there's lots of benefits to that in terms of convenience and time. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and again, like I've... There's there's few tools that you could focus on whether it's kettlebells, barbells, dumbbells, but you don't need a whole lot. Mm-hmm. You just need, um, you know, a plan, a real good solid program uh, to to go around. Yeah. That. Well, well, step one, if I were to, you know, when we program uh, a hip program for a client, the very very first thing that we consider is, is it appropriate for this person? So we said this earlier in this in this podcast, but I'll, I'll emphasize it. Um, you have to have decent movement, so you can't be a total out of shape beginner. Hit is intense, okay? So if you've been working out for a little while and you've got a, a you know a decent amount of fitness, you, you know that's number one. Um, you should uh, be be in good standing with your health, so you're not already pushing yourself on the brink of overdoing it. If you already feel like you can barely handle your workout load now, probably not a good idea to throw hit on top of it. Mm -hmm. If you're feeling great and you're like, yeah, I feel like I can handle more intensity and feel great and I'm getting good sleep and my diet's decent, um, then hit uh, may be appropriate for you. Um, You're also, I talked about having good movement patterns. Here's something that uh, really frustrates me with most hit workouts that I see that are out there is they place zero emphasis on mobility. Yeah. There's none. I haven't seen any program highlight that. And besides maps hit, I mean, talk, I haven't found any. Right. Talk about like one of the most compromising styles of workouts, uh, where it's going to put the most demand on your joints, and yet we don't have, uh, you know, a way to recuperate from that, and then also like uh, go through like uh, active rest, like in between that, and really like express the type of movements you need constantly in your joints and reinforce that. Like it, it to me, that that's crazy. No, you want it. You have to consider consider all of the, when you look at a workout, any workout, look at what it's stressing the most 
And then a very smart thing to do would be to address that as part of your workout programming. And what HIT style training tends to stress the most are movement patterns. It tends to stress mobility the most because of the intensity, because of the intense nature. Because I'm pushing myself so hard, my form can break down a little bit and I can cause problems in my joints. So it only makes sense to make mobility uh, a, a, a part of my programming. Mm-hmm. I mean, look, it's no different than if I were driving my car through the desert, I would consider the fact that my car is going to be filtering a lot of sand out of the air. And so I'm going to bring a bunch of air filters with me, knowing that I'm going to have to change them out. So if you're doing HIT training, knowing that you're going to stress your mobility, knowing that your movement patterns are going to be challenged quite a bit, you need to prescribe or, or at least incorporate, I should say, a mobility practice in your workout. Otherwise, you're kind of asking uh, for trouble. Yeah. So that would be the other thing. Like, like programming a HIT workout needs to have some type of a mobility component that helps uh, solidify good movement. Now, you, you guys will, you, you'll, if you read up on HIT, you'll see uh, several different um, time protocols. Mm-hmm. Uh, how do you guys like to coach it when you coach it? Because oh, I, yeah. I tend to coach it differently than what you'll Google and find um, when it comes to the how, how long do I mm-hmm. sprint as hard as I can or how long do I go after this and then how long do I rest for it? What do you guys typically well, recommend? Well, I mean, the biggest thing for me is to really pay attention to composure and where the form starts to break down mm. and, and diminish. And I feel like... I mean, you could get anything off the internet and they're going to give you a time sequence that, that sounds great. And it's something that, uh, you know, maybe the first round you did it, like you, you were able to like really uh, get through it with good form and, but then it started to break down, but you're still trying to push yourself. Right. Cause there's that mentality. I think a, a lot of people going into these workouts, they want to be able to maintain this high level, this competitiveness of getting through it. Yeah. And the, the entire goal is to get through uh, the workout. Whereas like I always try to, to, to caution my clients to really pay attention to, you know, the, the form, the mechanics. And uh, when it starts to break down, that's where we, we stop and we, we get our appropriate rest and move on. Now that, and that's the only way to individualize hit training. It's, it's that right there because what ends up happening is people will say, oh, I'm supposed to sprint for, you know, as hard as I can with this exercise for 20 seconds. And then I'm supposed to go easy for 30 seconds and then repeat. Well, 20 seconds of all out exertion may be too much or maybe the weight you're using is too much for that length of sprint uh, of time. But because it's a, it's a hard time, you're going to keep going. Form's going to go bad. You're going to strengthen poor recruitment patterns because now you're moving terribly and the workout has lost its effectiveness. Or, because I do the same thing, I'll tell my client, go hard and fast but as, as, until your form starts to break down. When your form starts to break down, now you take a small break and then wait till your composure comes back where you think you can apply that intensity again. And then what ends up happening, this is what I love about that, is as the person progresses through the HIT workout from week to week and they become more fit, Mm-hmm. They naturally yeah. increase that time shrinks their time and in the in the intensity mm-hmm. because they can go a little longer or a little harder or they short they rest a little bit less and it's based off of their own fitness yeah. level and that makes it much more individualized and anything that's individualized is more effective than generalized that's a rule in fitness. Well, I find that you know, and again too, I think it's appropriate to as a coach or a trainer who is, and when this is why we incorporate this in the MAPS HIT program was there should be levels to this as far as uh, the, the duration that you're talking about right now. Like uh, I can do HIT training with, you know, several different levels of fitness. It It's not only for super advanced people. I mean, if you are in, if you have good movement patterns and you're relatively, you're in, in relatively good shape, uh, getting on and doing uh, hit hit training on the elliptical is pretty damn safe, you know, sure. and a, a great tool for for most people. But when I'm on, let's say, in a piece of equipment like that, and I'm not doing it circuit style with weights, because if I'm doing it weight, that's obviously a little bit more advanced, because that person has to be 
first of all, very mechanically sound in the first place. And they also have to have really good body awareness to know that as soon as their body starts to mm-hmm. break down in form and they're feeling it into in, in secondary muscles trying to take over to know, okay, it's time to shut it off. Mm-hmm. But if you're on a piece of cardio equipment, I can say, okay, I want you to go as hard as you can on this elliptical for 20 seconds and try and get your heart rate up as high as you can. And then I want you to rest. Now, when you rest, that that's to me where the, the greatest variances yeah because some people in really good cardiovascular shape will be ready to go again in 45 seconds to a minute some of my clients i've seen take two and a half three minutes for that heart rate to normalize again and then be fine and there's no if i just if i keep sending them back on that circuit that client who's really deconditioned on and we're training hit and i go oh the protocol says 20 seconds hard rest for one minute go again and their heart's still pounding towards the max and they go out again now i'm just high intensity cardio mm-hmm. i'm no longer getting those benefits there's a, no interval a lot of the benefits <laughs> yeah. people need to understand of hit cardio is the dropping of the heart rate that's mm-hmm. it that's what makes mm-hmm. That's what makes it uh, kind of like resistance training more than other forms of cardio. It's that you're taking those small breaks to allow yourself to build up up enough ATP or enough energy stores to go hard again so that you build the strength. This is why I think uh, 100% across the board, uh, again, if it's appropriate, that high-intensity interval training with weights is superior than high intensity interval training with cardio. Mm-hmm. If if it's appropriate for the person, doing it with weights is superior than doing it with cardio. First off, I get the dual benefit. I get the I get the calorie benefit, burning benefit like I would with cardio. But now I get the dual benefit of strengthening particular areas of the body. Now I can make my hit work my muscles more directly than just being on a bike or cuz 90% of cardio equipment out there is leg intensive. I'm doing lots of leg hit type training. Mm-hmm. When I'm using barbells and dumbbells for hit training, now I can I, not only do I work my legs if I want, but I can I can work more hamstrings, I can work more quads, I can work more hips, or I can work my upper body. I could do hit and incorporate chest exercises and shoulder exercises and you know, uh, back exercises and arm exercises. So hit with weights the problem, the, the problem with weights with high intensity interval training is it requires much more more skill, much more programming and yeah. more skill. Like, I, you know, like when I see people do high intensity interval training with weights, I almost never see well programmed workouts. But if it's programmed well, there's just more skill involved with with programming. If it's programmed well, hit with weights is just it's the best. Yeah. It's the best form of. Uh, of I high also think part training. of that is because so many people abuse the cardio side of it too. I mean, mm-hmm. when I see hit cardio being done right now, when I look around the gym, I, I don't see people allowing the heart rate to come all the way down. I see them mm-hmm. going as hard as they can, you know, slowing down just a little bit to let their heart rate kind of catch their breath, and they get right after it again, and they're keeping their heart rate at like. 150 plus the entire time and they're not letting it dip. I don't even see people slowing down. No. I mean that's not very common for me to even see them try and regain composure. It's right. just it's just okay, I do this. Now I got to jump. Now I got to push up. Now I got to dip. Now they try and like uh, string it all together based off of like, you know, what they could just do in place, you know, with their body weight and it's just cardio. It's yeah, just yeah, really high yeah, intense cardio the whole time. High intense cardio now. The, that's just it. I just if I that point I'm trying to make, I've had to repeat to clients so many times. So often. You have the heart rate coming down is the most important part to hit. Otherwise, you're just doing high intensity training and all those great studies that everybody talks about and all the great you're benefits. You're not getting any of it. You're none not of getting it. those benefits. You're just doing high intensity cardio. That's so right. that's so important. That's right. Now, and I mean, and this is all the stuff that we, you know, I remember when we wrote Maps Hit, we had to consider all this stuff. And that's why we incorporated the way that the workouts are designed with the barbells and dumbbells with the small breaks in between and the, the way that we incorporated the mobility, which I'm telling you right now, in my experience, training people and watching people do HIT training, there's two things that prevent people from getting good results from HIT. One is they burn themselves out. It mm-hmm. just was too much intensity. It's not appropriate for them. And the other one is they hurt themselves. I can't tell you how many times I've had people come up to me and they and I asked them about their injury. Why why did you stop working out for the last couple of weeks? Oh, I was doing a hit workout and I pulled a hamstring or I hurt my shoulder. Mm-hmm. It's like oh, so when we wrote our maps hit, 
a hundred, like a lot of the effort went into the mobility in between the hit workouts to prevent that from happening. Well, you have two flow days that we incorporate. That's right. Yeah. That's so right. the thing about the flow is interesting because uh, we did something a little unique too with these mobility sessions to make them a little more fun and uh, engaging. And so we actually strung together lots of moves that were really restorative and you'll find some of them in yoga, but um, very much of these flow patterns that, that you know, take you into uh, just natural positions that really really help to restore that uh, that that movement and that integrity of of each joint. So it was very well thought out and it actually is its own uh, workout in a sense. It is. And you know so so here's some takeaways for if you're listening and you're like okay I want to do hit training properly. First off consider the exercises that you're putting together. I would say 3 to 5 exercises at the most. Beginners maybe 3, intermediate 4, advanced 5. It's kind of how we 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 even programmed ours make sure you take a day off in between your hit workouts. And in those days off, do some mobility work. Um, we, we call ours flow sessions, but if you're doing this on your own, go to the gym and just focus on stretching and movement and dynamic stretches just to, uh, to, to maintain your mobility because hurting yourself, nothing will stop you progressing faster um, than, than hurting yourself. And then make sure that it's appropriate for you. Like, are you an overstressed person who's already – pushing everything to the edge. If that's you, don't do it. Don't do it. If you're feeling great and you're healthy, then it may be appropriate for you. And then finally, the length of time that you, you train in the cycle. I mean, how long would you guys, how long would, we wrote MAPS HIP to be what, four weeks long? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's probably about as long, I'd say four weeks, max fat burn, max calorie burn, and then get out of it. Let's get mm-hmm. out of it and go back to our more traditional training so that we don't get our bodies to adapt too much in that. Well, training. the cool part about, you know, MAPS hit has become um, one of our top sellers. I mean, we, we, we haven't even had it around as long as some of the other older programs and it surpassed uh, how many other programs. I mean, people just tend to gravitate towards this training, but the coolest part about the program has been getting the feedback on what people, people absolutely love the flow sessions. Yep. I mean, mm-hmm. we, we, we incorporated like animal flow and that's where, mm-hmm. uh, I think we haven't had, we haven't done anything like that. And any- you're going from one mobility position to another mobile. It's a flow. Seamlessly. You're literally flowing. Yeah. 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 And, and it's, it's a, it's a little bit of a workout in and of itself. Which, oh, it's like, it's actually challenging. Yeah. Well, there's you, levels if, of it. If, actually. Yeah. If you take it on as a challenge of trying to move really well, that, I think that's why people liked it so much. It was, it isn't just boring mobility or stretching sessions for, you know, 30 minutes to an hour. It's kind of like this rhythm that you're trying to find. And that's, I think if you take it on like that as a challenge, like looking at the models in the videos that are doing it and can I get to the point where I'm flowing as well as they are better, uh, so much benefit to that. Actually, that's such a great point. There's a huge misconception out there about mobility that it's uh, this relaxed um, passive, boring form. stretch yeah, session. No, no, no. Real mobility is work. Yep. You have to connect to what you're doing. You have to uh, activate your central nervous system. It's going to make you sweat and it's going to make you, you're going to feel like you have, you got a bit of a workout. That's what gives you the mobility. It's not sitting on the floor, stretching your hamstrings, scrolling through Instagram. Nothing's on your phone. passive about it. No, no, no. At all. Real mobility is a little bit of work, but definitely incorporate that in your routine. And then here's the other thing. If you want to really maximize your fat burn, do not negate the other effects of your of calorie burn throughout the day. In particular, your NEAT. Mm-hmm. All of the activity that you do throughout the day, that's not your workout. You know, NEAT stands for uh, non-exercise activity thermogenesis. Um, pay attention to that because that burns more calories than almost anything else that you do. So that's like how many steps you take, how much you move throughout the day um, when you're when you're working or you know when you're whatever. That's not a workout. That burns a lot of calories. In fact, in, in our program, MAPS HIT, we prescribe NEAT on the weekends. So it's like, hey, here's your weekends. You're not doing your HIT workouts. You're not doing your flow sessions, but pay attention to how yeah, many steps you're taking. I highly suggest you at least get like a pedometer or if you have one of those wearables, like this is an appropriate place to use that just to give you some kind of feedback mm-hmm. as to how active uh, you were throughout the day. Oh, yeah. a great time for it right now. It's summertime. So go for a hike, go for a nice long walk and stroll outside. I mean, that's how, I, this is the first program that we actually started to in, uh, integrate the the neat recommendations in there. So mm-hmm. yep. everything from this, the first time we did flow sessions, the first time we started recommending neat, and then you're doing what, hit three times a week mm-hmm. is what we have scheduled in there. Really cool. And then each each one we progress, right? So it's 
bar, it starts barbell complexes first, then goes to to dumbbell, then goes to to uh, body weight. That's yeah. right. That's and right. And you can go in different levels. If you're starting out as a beginner, you know, you may uh, adapt to that and even progress forward into intermediate, and then yeah. you know, intermediate to advanced. So you know, there's levels to this as well. Now, and the way that you would do this on your own is a hit workout, a real good hit workout. Uh, many times may replace a traditional resistance training workout if you're doing a lot of weight training. Now, if you're not doing a lot of weight training, you can throw it on top. But let's say you're lifting weights six days a week very intensely. I would do you could sub, you could substitute one of the workouts for a hit workout. I wouldn't necessarily throw it on top. Now, if you're working out two or three days a week uh, in the gym with weights, then you can definitely add a couple hit workouts. Um, again, if you're healthy and it's appropriate for you, and you'll just get that the the amplified fat burning effect. But you know, here's a deal, and I've done this oftentimes, and I, I often don't share this because I I'm very careful with my words, and I know how some people can overdo things. Okay, but if it is appropriate for you, you are healthy, you're getting good sleep, you're relatively fit, um, and you're eating a good diet. So you're in your because your goal is to try and get lean, so you're eating at a deficit. Four weeks of proper hit training will burn more fat than anything you've ever seen. Um, it's, it's that effective. Now I always caution myself, even when I say that, because again, if it's not appropriate for you, um, then it won't do that for you. It'll do the opposite. It may, you may end up getting hurt or burning yourself out, but if it's appropriate for you and you want to burn fat in a hurry, hit, uh, done with a good diet. Uh, there's nothing I've seen, at least with clients or myself that burns body fat any faster. All right. Thank you for listening to mind pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.